All right, all right. Friday illustration masterclass. Today is a great one. It's nice and simple, folks, but you know what? Powerful, powerful, because we are talking about five, count them, one, two, three, four, five tips that every artist should know about here in good old Photoshop, okay? Sure, there are a lot of other painting and drawing applications out there, but I'm telling you, there's a reason Photoshop continues to reign supreme. Why? I'm going to show you today a couple of really major time-saving features and super powerful things that you can do only in Photoshop. We're going to take a look at those today. So anyway, thanks for joining me. I am Kyle Webster. I'm your host for the show today, and we're going to dive right in starting now. Here we go. All right, we are in Photoshop. Got a little drawing I'm doing here, just experimenting with some brushes and things like that. And the first thing I want to talk about in Photoshop is, well, you guessed it, brushes. This is tip number one. This is the big feature, okay? Those of you who draw and paint, you're an illustrator. You want to work in Photoshop to create illustrations, to create art. What are you going to do if you don't have brushes? Well, the good news is in this app, you have access to over two thousand different brushes all conveniently arranged into different brush sets they're there waiting for you to experiment to play and to create something amazing however a lot of people don't realize that they have access to these when they first open photoshop they open the brushes panel and they go oh cool there are some brushes here not only that folks but they see my name they see kyle and they go oh i've got quote unquote, the Kyle brushes. How great. This is so fun. But folks, that's the tip of the iceberg. Not even the tip. It's the tip of the tip of the tip of the iceberg. It's one tiny snowflake on the iceberg, if we're going to be honest here, because you are missing out on the mother load of brushes that are available to you. Okay, now where are they? Where are they? Open up your brushes panel right here. Okay and move right on up to this little drop down menu kyle why did they hide them in here listen folks i don't make these decisions that's why i do these shows so i can give you the vital info tap on that and look here get more brushes you tap on get more brushes that's the secret that's the key because then what it's going to do is it's going to launch your browser and it's going to take you to a web page where you can use your Adobe credentials, your ID and password to sign in. Check it out. Here we go. And um, look, that's my wife's hand, by the way. I took this photo. <laughs> Little insider info for you there. Maybe it'll be on Jeopardy someday. Okay, but look, sign in to download. Kablam, right there. You sign in. And then it takes you to the page where you have all of the brush sets and you scroll through them, download anything you want, play around, have fun. They're updated every quarter. I release new brushes every quarter. And why are brushes so important to a digital artist? Well, it's simple. We all draw and paint differently, do we not, folks? We all draw and paint differently. And one brush might speak to one person and another might speak to somebody else. Nobody wants to use the same tools, therefore, why not have choices, okay? But it goes beyond that. This is what I want to talk about here with this first um, point I want to make today, one of five, all right, is that, yes, it's great to have the custom brushes, and it's great to have them do all kinds of crazy things. For example, I've got this grassland brush right here, and I was thinking, gosh, wouldn't it be nice to just throw some grass here off in the distance like this, all right? Grab a little darker color here and then just throw a little, gla a little grass here in front of that, and then go even darker right here. Make it a little bigger and just throw that grass in. See how convenient that is? So easy peasy, okay? But maybe that's not what somebody wants. They want a completely different grass brush. So they go in there and they say, you know what? I kind of want something else. Um, I'm wanting to have like sort of a hedgy kind of a mix here in the grass and I want to throw some hedgy kind of stuff in there like this. All right, maybe that's kind of more their bag, all right? But whatever it is, folks, you can adjust, change, tweak, and customize all these brushes. And that's the thing to remember. Right here you have brush settings, brush settings, okay? And all you gotta do, 
is go back through YouTube and look for my name, Kyle Webster Brushes, okay? And you're going to find so much content where I will explain for you how the brush settings panel works, how you can customize and change brushes, and what you can do to really make these things perform exactly the way you want for your style, all right? And that's the beauty of it. So yes, point number one here in Photoshop, access to brushes first and foremost. Now, in a lot of other apps and everything, you want to get brushes, well, you got to go out there, you got to seek them out, you got to buy them, you got to find what you need. If you are a subscriber to Photoshop or Creative Cloud, you're getting 30, 40 new brushes every quarter. You're getting brushes for special events. You're getting freebies all the time through Adobe Create and other um, promos and things like that. And you've got this gigantic library of tools just waiting for you, all right? And this includes things for everybody who works at every kind of illustration work. If you're a comics artist, there's an entire library of halftone brushes, halftones and screen tones, all right? The halftones are actually responsive to pen pressure. What do I mean by that? I mean that if you were to try and do a halftone pattern, you'd actually be able to with, if you look here, the pressure that you're applying, okay, with your stylus, okay, whether you're using a Wacom tablet or something similar, um, using the pressure, all right, here if I click on this brains one, for example, right, light pressure, look what I get, heavier, 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 see that? I can control the density of that screen with the pressure of the pen. Amazing, and there are over 150 of these to play with, so comics artists, rejoice, okay? Inking tools, there are over 80 inking tools in the Megapack ink box. Um, if you're a painter, open up the oils, okay, in the Megapack paint box, open up the paint box. Um, and this leads me to another thing I wanna talk about, which is not just variety of the actual brushes that you can use here, but the kind of brushes, what I mean is the behaviors of the brushes are also different depending on what kind of um, brush you're using, not just brush presets, okay? But Photoshop has different kinds of brushes baked in. So you have your regular Photoshop brushes here. You're familiar with this little icon for the brushes, but there's a whole other category of brushes in Photoshop. And I'm talking about the mixer brushes, okay? So what are mixer brushes? Well, the, the name kind of gives it away, okay? The mixer brushes are brushes that mix paint on the surface, okay? Check it out. I'm gonna make a new layer here, and if you look, over here, I'm long tapping on my brushes. You can come on down to this tool right here, the mixer brush tool. And let's go on into that little mega pack, which I was mentioning a moment ago. Not so little gang, it's actually got over 400 brushes in it. And let's open up this little category here, real oils. Look at the icon for all of these brushes and you will see a little water droplet next to each of these brushes, which is saying to me, Kyle, these are mixer brushes. And what's so great about them? Check it out. Put a little color down here, okay? Paint with them like this, okay? So far, nothing fancy, right? It's a nice little canvas texture, nice bristles. I love it, that's great. Let's go over here, let's change the color to this yellow. Now I'm gonna paint over here, and then as I pull into the green, whoa, look what happens. See that? Mixes with the green mixer brush and we don't stop there because if you look here at the top of the screen for my tool options for the mixer brush okay now every time using any of your tools in your toolbar the tool options present themselves in this top bar here mixing value one percent if i increase this mixing value okay to roughly 50 i'm going to pick up more of that green on the canvas when i paint into it so you can control how much mixing there is. You can control how much actual flow there is. Is the paint flying out of that brush when you're painting? Or is it just slowly seeping out, right? How wet, okay, is the paint? The drier the paint, the less mixing, right? There's a lot here to consider. And you have tons and tons and tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of options to play with here for the painting. All right, going beyond that, mixer brushes also allow you to sample anything on the canvas and turn it into a brush stamp. So what I mean by this 
is, for example, I have this area here with this foliage, okay? Now, watch this. If I take my mixer brush and I go to the, the shape of the brush stamp and make it something really simple, I'm just gonna go for a sort of a circle here, okay? Bam, nothing fancy. I'll get rid of this texture, okay? And now all we've got is a big round brush. I'm gonna make it a bit bigger. And I've got this leafy area here. And what I wanna do is I wanna sample what I see right here. So if I hold down my option key, this temporarily calls up my eyedropper tool. And if I just tap here, okay, normally what happens is I select a solid color. But check this out. Mixer brushes have their own color swatch. See this? Let's go here and let's uncheck load solid colors only. And now hold down the option key and tap again. And if you can see right here, it has actually sampled this entire area of that specific layer. So now if I paint with it, look, see what's in there with every brush stamp? It's got those leaves. So what I'm going to do is make a new layer here and I've still got this information on my brush. If I now were to take this brush and increase the spacing like this, okay, and paint with it, you can see that stamp being repeated, okay, from the area that I selected right there. I still have control over all these other elements. Does it mix? Yes or no? There are even presets. I can go here and say I need a dry, heavy load of paint, which means no mixing. So if I paint over and over and over again with it like that, no mixing is going to occur. All right. Now if I go and I change my brush stamp to something a bit more interesting, all right. For example, what if I change it to something that has sort of a leafy look to it? All right. Got a bunch of options here. And maybe if I go with something like this and decrease the spacing a little bit, and we say we want angle jitter, all kinds of things. Then I've still got that same information on the stamp and look what happens when I paint with it. See that? Pretty darn cool. So this is an entirely separate category of brushes that you have available to you here in Photoshop, all right? Lots more to talk about with brushes. We don't have time today, but I wanted to just give you a little sampling of all the cool stuff you can do. There's so much more, um, but that's number one. You're a digital artist, you wanna paint and draw in Photoshop, get yourself some good brushes, go right here to the drop down menu, okay? Bam, get more brushes, start playing around, start figuring out what really works for you and serves your needs, and you are off to the races, okay? All right, so, What's the second thing I'm gonna talk about? Well, this is one of those, not necessarily secrets in Photoshop, but one of the things a lot of people don't take full advantage of. There are lots of ways it can speed up your work and make your life easier. What I'm talking about is actions. Actions are fantastic, all right? Before I continue, let's say hi to some folks who are joining us today. This is a live show after all. So I see Cody, hi Cody. I see Steven, hi Steven. I see Joshua, nice to see you. And Bernd, that sounds like a German name, but correct me if I'm wrong, Bernd. Um, I see Leah, hi Leah. Umicorn, what's up? Gareth, and uh, Robert, and Grace. hello, hello. Aya, nice to see you as well. Clarissa, thanks for joining us, Clarissa. And Jack, Jack is back. Barbara, nice to see you as well. I'm just trying to scroll through. Cryo, hi, hi, hi. Fabio, let's see. How you doing? <laughs> I am a real person. <laughs> Yesterday's stream left you wondering. That's funny. Uh, yeah, here I am. All right. Derek, nice to see you as well. All right, here we go. Let's keep on rolling with actions. What are actions? So there are a lot of times in Photoshop where you have some kind of action that you are repeating frequently, okay? Or maybe it's a series of actions that you are repeating frequently. So let's break it down and make it really simple to understand. I'll give you an example. All right, now, here's what we're gonna do. We'll make a new document, okay? And we're going to make a shape. I'm gonna use my little lasso fill plug and this will be really quick this way. All right. 
here is my shape. Okay, there's my shape. Now, <clears throat> let's go ahead and build ourselves an action. All right, so check this out. Close up all these other ones here. And in order to start making an action, all you have to do is open up your actions panel. See, it looks like the little play button. If you don't see it, just like anything else in Photoshop, if you're not seeing a specific panel, come over here to window and it'll show you all the possible panels that you could have open, okay? And you just wanna make sure that actions is open. See a little check mark right there? All right, now here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say that I wanna start a new action. I'm gonna be recording the actions that I'm about to take in this document. Check it out. Right here, I add a little action. I say plus, we're gonna call this demo, okay? Since this is what I'm doing. You can assign a color to it if you want, okay? If you have a lot of actions, it's nice to be able to separate them out that way. And I say, okay, no function key, but that's pretty cool, isn't it? Look, you can assign a function key for an action. Pretty darn nifty. All right, here we go, let's say record. All right, now we're off to the races. I'm about to record an action. So first thing I'm gonna do, all right, is I'm gonna say edit, transform, flip horizontal. So that's the first step in my action, okay? The next thing I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise, all right? The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up my hue and saturation sliders and I'm gonna suck out all the color. Voila, all right? And I think finally what we'll do, uh, let's see, we could do lots of things. I'm thinking, you know, practically we'll do this. We're gonna say that we're gonna take this layer and we're gonna name it shape, okay? And we're gonna lock its layer transparency, like so. And last but not least, we're going to change the color to yellow, right? So we go to edit, fill with foreground color. We say, okay. And that didn't work because I think I sucked all the color out. <laughs> <laughs> so here's what we'll do. We'll take the paint bucket tool and we'll do it that way. All right, so I've got foreground color selected. My tolerance is okay. Everything else looks good. And we're just gonna tap and fill. All right, now, these are all the things that I've just done step by step by step by step by step. Right down here, like you're using a video recorder, you just say stop, okay, that little square there. All right, can you see that? I'll make sure everyone can see this right here. I hit stop, I hit record, did all my actions, then I hit stop. Now right here at the bottom of the list, okay, I have demo, there it is. There's that set of actions, okay? And it stuck it in this folder under Kyle actions. So I'm gonna take it and just drag it outside of all these right here. I want it to sit on its own <clears throat> in a new folder, which I'm gonna call demo. There we go. All right, now, once I have this action, okay, watch what happens if I hide this shape and I go ahead and grab another color and I go ahead, I make this shape here. And we select this action demo and hit play. Ready? Go. Happens in two seconds, all right? But what just happened? Flipped it horizontally, rotated it 90 degrees, sucked all the color out, not that we'd know, um, filled it with yellow and locked the layer transparency and named it shape. See that? All those things happen in the blink of an eye. Why do you think this is useful? Why is this something I need to do? Well, think about the many, many, many times 
that you have had, for example, multiple images, and each of those images require you to resize them, rotate them, change the hue saturation values, okay, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and you're opening up one file at a time, and you're just going through these motions, and you think there's got to be a better way. For example, you could create an action for all that. And then you go one better than that, folks. Instead of simply opening up each file, running the action and then closing it, saving it or whatever, which is already an improvement, you can do something even cooler. So let's say I have 400 images for my portfolio. I want all of them to be exactly 800 pixels wide. Okay, I'm going to design out a grid for a new Squarespace website or something like that. Now, I don't want to have to open all those up and do that. So what I do is I have my source folder with all those images. And what you do is you come over here to file and look here. What a great word. Automate. That sounds promising. Batch. And right here, it'll select the most recent action that you have used. In this case, it's demo, right? From that folder demo. There it is. You select your source folder. So I say, okay, I'm going to go and I'm going to choose the folder from my files okay where i'm going to contain everything and then i choose a destination folder and the moment i hit go on that it's going to i can sit back drink a coffee and watch as photoshop opens each and every one of those images runs the actions and then dumps them into that new folder it's like having a personal assistant just take care of all that busy work for you while you do other stuff so Actions are amazing. Now, you can really get crazy with actions. You can do stuff where you have, you know, 300, 400 commands for really complex stuff. And an example of that is that, you know, I, I do this for myself, but I'm also, you know, making products and things for people where I make actions that save people time so that they don't have to try and develop them themselves. Um, an example would be, if you look over here, I've got a bunch of actions. Um, let's look at, for example, simple palette, okay? Look at this simple palette action here. It starts here. Whoa, that's a lot of work. Okay, a lot of interesting stuff going on there. And what I can do when I run that is I can select any old color. Okay, and whatever my foreground color is, all I have to do is just click on simple palette one and hit play. And what it's going to do is it's going to make a palette based on that color. Okay, with all these variations like that. And I've got that layer and I can just start working from that color palette. Um, and these palettes are always going to be harmonious and they're going to work just great. Um, if I think I want to make another option with that same foreground color, I can do an analogous pattern, uh, a, a palette right here. Hit run, say go ahead, let's do it. Bam. There's an analogous palette. So something like that, you know, to create palettes or do things that, you know, otherwise would take a long, 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 long time. If you look at the actions here, you can see that's a lot of steps. Um, you can do really simple things. You can do really complex things. But when you get a lot of actions built, you don't want to have to interact with them like this. And so another cool thing you can do with actions is check this out. If you go here to this little drop down menu, you have button mode. This way you can have your actions look like buttons. And then they just wind up being single button actions. So now I could try all these palettes. I could do a complementary palette and be like, yeah, let's see what that looks like. Cool. You know, I just hit the button once, run the action, and we're good to go. All right. So actions are really, really, really powerful. Here they are. They're in Photoshop. A lot of people don't know about them. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do with them. All right. Any questions about actions before we move on? I thought the stream had ended, said Robert. Why? <laughs> I wonder why, I wonder why. Um, you're on the brush download page, Joshua, Joshua says. Yes, your mind is blown. I'm so glad. Great to find those, great to use them. So glad you're there. You can't change the colors in your actions, says Umicorn. Hmm, can't change the colors. Um, well, if you already have your actions built, okay, and you're not in button mode, what you do is select any action, come over to the little drop down menu here and go to action options. And here you should find the colors right there. Hope that answers your question. Okay. All right. So that's two down. We got three to go. What's next on the list? 
All right, well, what I want to talk to you next about is vector shapes. Now, you say, wait a sec, vector shapes? That sounds like an illustrator thing, Kyle. Well, hold on a minute, hold on a minute. Let's imagine that I'm drawing some knight. I've got this cool character that I've designed. And, um, you know, here I'll just I'll just do like, there's like a helmet there, da 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 And he's got the big shoulder pads, you know. Rawr, okay, there we go. And he's got his boots. This is gonna be like a super simplified knight kind of guy. Rawr, okay, shaking his fist. More shoulder pads. Okay, there's my knight. All right, now I need to have a crest right here. You know, some kind of a, um, for the, for his, um, his clan or whatever, right? Boom, 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 boom. Now I'm just going crazy because I can't help myself. Uh, but we want to put a nice crest there. So normally I could just design it. I could just draw it, right? But what if I want to use it as a vector shape because I want it to be infinitely scalable. I want to use it over and over again. I'm making a comic and I constantly want to slap that thing on flags and on the castle doors and on the other knights. And I want it to be an asset that's reusable. <gasps> what do I do? You create a vector shape out of it and it's so easy to do that. So check this out. Here we go. i make a new layer. All right, now, first I'll just quickly design uh, that, that crest. Okay, it's not gonna be anything fancy here. It's just gonna go like that. Okay, I'm gonna go here and turn on delete. I'm using a plugin for this, but you know, I'm just, this is nothing you can't do. Just using the lasso tool and I'm saving time by not having to do the delete, you know, or, or fill actions, okay? Um, this is a plugin I have in my Gumroad shop. And for those of you who do a lot of lasso stuff, this might save you some time. But... Okay, so here is the crest. There's the design, okay? Now, that's on its own layer, okay? There are lots of ways to make a vector shape. You can use the shapes right here to build something, all right, as pads, but I just did this with pixels. I need this to be vector paths. What do I do? All right, check it out. I'm going to make a selection of this layer by saying Command. Okay, I'm holding down Command. If you're on a PC, you hold down Control, and I tap on the image preview right here, this tiny little thumbnail, like that. Now that makes a selection of that area. Then I come over here to paths and I say, make work path, bam. It says, Kyle, what's the tolerance? I always say one or two pixels, okay? Now look what it did. It made an actual work path right there. Okay, so what is that? Look, it's a path. It's a path. See that? We're almost there, folks. Here's what you do next, okay? You've got that path now. So what you do is you come over here and you see how I have my vector shapes right here, rectangle tool and all those. Make sure that is selected, okay? Select that tool. That's all you gotta do. And then come up to here where it says edit, define custom shape. Edit, define custom shape, bam. Look at that, see that? We're gonna call it crest. I misspelled it, but that's okay. <gasps> okay, window, right? Shapes, see this right here? If your shapes are visible, and I tuck mine right here, see this? I got them tucked away, easy to access. And look at that, it shows up right there. Now, let's just hide this layer for a moment and let's imagine i've got my knight there okay and we're gonna move him over here and then i've got like a flag we're gonna put a flag okay back here so check it out off in the distance all right there's like a hilltop I'm not gonna to be too fancy here, but you get the idea, okay? Whoops, how come it's not filling the color? What am I doing wrong there? 
feel like I'm, I must have selected something and then I don't know what's going on here. Whoop. There we go. Okay. There we go. All right, I've got my hilltop here and um, or my little grassy background. Here's that flag. Okay. And that's off in the distance, and here's our knight standing here, okay, ready to do battle. Now, if I go to my shapes, watch this. I literally, literally just drag it out onto the canvas, okay? This is 100% vector. Look, I'm distorting it, I'm transforming it, whatever I want. No pixelation whatsoever, 100% based on my design, okay? I stick it wherever I want. I hit go, I hit enter, that's committed. Now it's there, but it's still vector. Okay, don't forget, it's still vector. If you want to pixelate it, uh, pixelize it, or whatever you want to rasterize it, you can totally do that. Just come over to here to layer, control, okay? And you can rasterize that layer, all right? But look, I can drag it out here again. I want to put it on that flag. Look here, I've got my properties for my shape. So I can change the appearance right here. Just click on this, and look, it shows me my recently used colors. So I can grab that orange, right? Command T, I can transform it, free transform it, slap it on that flag. Now I've got this reusable vector asset, 100% customized. It's stuck right there in Photoshop, remembered, good to go. Now, heaven forbid, Photoshop crashes and loses all your info. You don't want that to happen. What can you do? Well, this actually leads me to another thing I did want to talk about today. It's not one of the main things but it's sort of a bonus tip and that's libraries because libraries come up a lot, but not everybody uses them. So there's a couple things. One, any one of these shapes or groups of shapes, you can select them all you want, okay? And you can go here and you can export your selected shapes. You can save them into one single file. If you have a thousand shapes that are all super cool and useful and you use them all the time, save them, save them into a file. You can load them into Photoshop anytime you want, but also libraries, window, libraries, okay? Um, look, I've got here all these libraries that I use for all kinds of things, right? Um, let's say for Adobe Live Assets, I wanted to have some vector shapes. Well, you can also have shapes added, okay, to your libraries, right? And all you have to do here is say graphic. And if you add that graphic, it'll add it as a vector shape, bam. And you can save and travel with these shapes that you've created as part of what you have in your libraries. So that's a little bonus tip for you. Um, but yeah, otherwise, export them, save them. It'll save into a single file, the same way you could have a thousand brushes in a single ABR file. And now you've got these custom vector shapes, okay? Now, if you want to build them with the vector shapes tools, you can. You can use the pen tool, create something, okay? Save it as a path, export that as a custom shape. Reusable assets, reusable assets. This is what we want, very exciting. Very exciting, very practical, very useful. Any questions about shapes? Let's see. Leah says, that is so cool. Had to come out of lurking for that one, says Biola. <laughs> nice to see you, Biola, I'm glad you're here. Vector power, oh yeah, indeed. Um, Leah says there's a one gig size limit for CC libraries. Mm, that sounds about right, yeah. Yeah, that's you'd have to have a lot of assets. I guess if you have a lot of photography, that could, yeah. If you're reusing a lot of photos for some reason. Um, yeah, favorite a folder just for your logos, big time. Throw all your logos in there, why not? Have them all ready to go as vector shapes. I mean, yeah, this is really powerful, really useful, and something a lot of people just don't realize is one of the features of Photoshop, people associate vector workflows with Adobe Illustrator, understandably. Um, hey, I get it, I get it. All right, let's look at something else, okay? Now that we've had some fun with the shapes, okay? Let's now talk about working non-destructively, things Photoshop allows you to do that are non-destructive. What am I talking about? Smart objects? and clipping masks, two of my faves, okay? So um, returning to this illustration here, let's say, you know, we're gonna have a couple of little rabbits down here um, chilling out. 
So uh, let's say, let's say that I go ahead and I have a little shape that I create for, for a rabbit, all right? So let's go ahead and make a little rabbit here. You probably hear that squeaking sound. I just uh, changed out the um, the stylus tip that I'm using here, which is the uh, Wacom felt nibs. And um, when they're fairly new, this one I've only been using for like, I don't know, a few days, I guess. When they're fairly new, they definitely make some noise. Okay, little picnic basket there. All right, so here's our, our rabbit going on a little picnic, okay? Um, now, I really, let's say I, I, I go to the trouble of, of painting this, okay? So here, I'm gonna just quickly lock the layer transparency. Um, and we're gonna make, uh, we're not gonna use, we're gonna use an actual a practical brush for this, obviously. Go into my paint box here, and we'll just grab something like, uh, here we go. Gouache a go-go, it's fine. All right, so let's say that I'm making a little bunny here and I paint the bunny and I like sort of general idea. A little dress and all these other little things. And I like this color for the basket, that works fine. All right, not gonna get super fancy with this um, in the interest of time, but here we go, working non-destructively. All right, so for these last two, these last two tips, all right, and they fall under the same category, working non-destructively, and they are clipping masks and smart objects okay so let's say I, I make this as like the base bunny I'm like I like this bunny it's great I kind of want to mess around but I don't want to like make a new layer and check this out all I have to do is come over here I say control I click on that and I say here convert to da, 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 smart object all right what does that mean what's the big deal all right watch this now we take our bunny Make it a little wider, make it a little shorter. Can I say, okay, there, that's 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 what I wanna do for now. Now I'm gonna carry on and I'm drawing and I'm, I'm like doing other things, okay? Um, and I'm messing around with this image and uh, I come on back down like, you know, 400 steps later and I look at the bunny and go, uh, you know, I kinda wanna change it back to like what it was, all right? But at this point, the moment I do a double transformation, well, you know what happens with pixels, right? The pixels were transformed one time already. You try and change them back the second time and well, what happens, right? Especially, what if I've done this? What if I've made the bunny smaller? And then I'm like, cool, cool, cool. Uh, No, I think I wanna make him bigger, but I've already gone ahead and done a whole bunch of other things and I can't go back because then I'm gonna be undo, 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 and undo all the great work I did. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Look, it's a smart object and that's indicated by this tiny little graphic here. Now, if I double click on the smart object thumbnail, look what it did, look what it opens up. Recognize that? That is our original bunny with the original proportions, okay? Everything's fine, everything's good. We haven't lost the bunny. Okay, it may look different in appearance in our other image, but the original pixels are intact. So, check this out. I'm gonna add a layer right here. And now we're coming to point number two, which is our good friend, clipping masks, okay? What are clipping masks? So, those of you who've done a lot of painting and drawing in Photoshop know about maybe locking layer transparency, Currently, if you look at this layer, the layer transparency is locked. And what that simply means is that I can paint out here and nothing will happen. But as I come across, okay, I'm going to affect the pixels that are already there. Locking layer transparency 
means that you are only able to edit in some way the pixels that are already on that layer. But anything outside of the boundaries of those pixels will be unaffected. You're not adding pixel data anywhere else, okay? Now, this is great if you're really confident and you know that the changes you wanna to make to something are gonna be permanent, but it is not a non-destructive way to work, okay? We're talking about working non-destructively here. So what do you do if you wanna have the same effect but work non-destructively? This is where clipping masks come in. I've made a new layer above okay, our bunny. And what I'm gonna do is hold down the option key and in between the two layers, see if I tap on this layer here and just do this. Now, remember on a PC, when I say op option, you should be holding down the Alt key, okay? Option, Alt, Option, Alt. It has now clipped this layer to this layer here. So what is clipping? You're gonna get the same effect where you can only modify, at least in terms of the appearance, what's underneath that layer, okay, the boundaries of that layer, but you're not actually changing what's beneath it. Let me show you what I mean, okay? So if I come in here and I use a lighter color, all right, and I use a brush that's a bit uh, softer here that I can actually do some build up with, we'll go into the color, um, uh, here we go, the watercolor fill brush, and I do this. So I want to make those ears a little lighter, okay? Look how I'm, pa I'm painting way outside of the boundaries of the bunny. Nothing gets affected. But notice that the only thing I'm actually painting on is this clipping mask layer. Now if I turn that off, look, same bunny, nothing's changed, everything's cool, but I'm changing the appearance thanks to this clipping mask. I can do the same thing here with the dress. I can say, oh, it'd be cool if maybe there's like some some hint of like pink here on the dress or something. I like that, that's nice, okay? So there's another change I can make. Now, remember, this is not permanent, okay? I'm working non-destructively, but for the moment, I might look at that and be like, hey, that's cool, I like it. Watch this, I hit Command S, which is what? Save, right? Command S, close it, hold, whoa, check it out. Remember my short bunny? The changes I applied to the smart object, which is its own little Photoshop file embedded in here, right? Automatically update right here on the other image. This is amazing, okay? Now a moment ago, what I say, I said, well, what if I wanted to have this same guy, you know, the same bunny go back to its quote unquote original form or whatever, right? Don't worry, double tap, here it is, right? I can simply merge these together if I want, Command E, Command C, Command V, right? Can always do that. But if I don't wanna mess up this, I can always undo that, okay? Um, I could have my two windows open, drag those layers over like that. And I can also, if I go back, tapping on this layer. Up, 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 up. See here where it says reset transform? I can go backwards in time with that smart object and it'll set me back to, um, to undo what I had done for deformation of that smart object. So if you think about it, there are lots of ways that this will help you work non-destructively. This combination of making smart objects which you can edit separately and that will be updated across the board in any documents that contain that single smart object, but also the ability to use clipping masks. You'll notice that clipping masks are different from regular masks. Clipping masks, I think, are a lot more versatile one of the cool things about clipping masks is that you can use multiple clipping masks in a, a, uh, for a single layer. So what does that mean? Well, let me just bounce back here. Notice that right now I'm using a clipping mask for this rabbit layer. If I add another layer, okay, I can clip this layer to that bunny by simply tapping on it and doing the same thing as before, just clipping it like this, okay? And once I've clipped it, 
the same rules will apply where I can paint out here and nothing happens, but as I travel across this way, look, I'm now affecting whatever is within the boundaries, okay, of that bunny. So this layer here, that's the base bunny layer, has two clipping masks, okay, attached to it. And this number can go up and up and up and it doesn't matter. So you can make multiple adjustments to a single layer, okay, through painting. You have tons of control. You're using your brushes, you're using different colors. All of this can be done with a single layer and multiple clipping masks. And 100% of what you're doing is non-destructive, fully editable, and that's one of the great things about digital art in general is that, of course, you can work non-destructively. And if you can do that, highly recommend it because it's gonna make your life a lot easier. Okay, so back to the bunnies there. We'll have that little short one. So now I can have like a mommy bunny and a little daughter bunny, okay? And they're gonna just go out into the forest and have their little picnic. Pausing for a moment for questions. You like using the Capture app to instantly create shapes from drawings. Yes, if you haven't used Adobe Capture, folks, you are missing out. Adobe Capture is insane, it's insane. Um, you can generate from Adobe Capture using your camera, whether it's iPhone or Android, iPad. You can generate custom brushes, both vector and pixel. You can generate color palettes from anything you point the camera at, okay? You can generate 3D textures, surface textures from anything you point the camera at. You can make vector art from anything you point the camera at or from any image that you import from your photo library. If you do a drawing in pencil, take a picture of it, bring it into capture, you can automatically streamline it into a piece of vector art. The same way that if you open up Illustrator and use the live image tracing, um, same kind of deal. Amazing. That's not all. Capture can identify what a font is when you point it at a piece of text out in the physical world, maybe a sign or something like that. It'll say, oh, I'll tell you what that font is. You can also do patterns, perfect tessellations, seamless tiling patterns, all this. And the best part is Adobe Capture is free. Did you know that? Yes, it is totally free. So yeah, thanks for mentioning Capture because man, that is an amazing app. Can you say vector groups as a shape, asks Gary. Yes, I think. I mean, if you have multiple vector shapes, you can save them all together as one single shape. If that's what you're asking, then yes, the answer is yes. Look, for example, okay, if I take my ellipse tool, all right, and we change this here to shape. Um, and I do this, I say, okay, ba bum I make that, I make another layer. And then I uh, do a different color here and I do this, okay. Um, and then let's do this. We'll, we'll grab the triangle tool, okay. Make another layer and I do that. Okay, whoops. Now, look, all I have to do is take these three layers together, one and two and three. All right, how many did I make? Whoops, yeah, four. All right, I grab all those together and I just go to edit, define custom shape. And look, it combines them all into one vector shape that I can bring into a document. So I think that's what you were asking and I hope uh, I answered it for you, okay? Any other questions? How often do you recommend changing the nibs? I let the felt nibs get crazy broken up. I wait until they're just a total mess before I change them. I change them only about once a year, maybe maybe once every six to eight months. If, if, if I, but not no, normally about a whole, I wait a, a whole year. When I, when I can no longer really get a full range of tilt with the brush, you know, that's when I change them. So I, I really wait till last second. Um, and yes, Marcin or Marsa or Marcin, I'm not sure how you say your name, pardon me. You can have nested smart objects as well. Very cool, very cool. Lots of powerful stuff 
um, to do with smart objects. Look, we only have a few minutes left, and there was one more thing I wanted to show you as somebody who paints and draw, uh, draws, um, and it's actually a twofer, okay? And here it is, gang. Let's just go ahead and I'm gonna take um, all this stuff and just hide it for a moment, okay? Let me show you. Two things that are like drawing aids that are really big, all right? First, I know you're gonna know, those of you who've watched my shows, you know what I'm about to say, okay? Symmetry, folks, if you're not using symmetry, oh my goodness, are you missing out? What is symmetry? Look right here. Anytime you select a brush, come over here to the top and look for the little butterfly and look at all these symmetry options. I'm just gonna hit vertical. I can move that anywhere I want on the canvas. I'll just stick it right here, okay? And now, speaking of our little bunny, everything I draw on one side is automatically mirrored on the other, okay? Just like that. Fantastic, okay? How adorable, bing bing, okay? So, look how simple this is, saves me a ton of time. And there's my little bunny. Okay, so that's symmetry drawing in Photoshop. That's the one thing I want to point out right out of the gate here. If you're drawing stuff, there's a lot of time when you need symmetry in your art, a lot of times. There are also times where you want to make patterns that are really cool, and you can change that symmetry to something like mandala and choose how many segments you need, okay? So like five segments of mandala symmetry. And we'll just pop that, uh, pop that over here, and look what happens when I draw with this now, okay? Bum, 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 bum. Bump, 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 bump. Okay, I am able to create beautiful symmetrical patterns thanks to the mandala symmetry right there. See that? Amazing. This is really, really, really useful stuff. Symmetry is right there. It's a little butterfly. It drops on down. If you look over your paths right here, you're going to find those um, symmetry guides right there, and you can tap on any one of them. Hold down the command key. You can move it around, okay? Piece it up, piece it apart. Oh, I've never done that. I've never, I've never separated. <gasps> what happens when I do that? Hmm, let's see what happens. Let's go to our layers and let's try something. Go back to our paths, turn on that one. Ding dong, let's see. Oh, I turned it off, didn't I? I don't know, something weird happened there. I don't know how I moved that away, but yes, if you want to access them, here they are. Mandala symmetry, vertical symmetry, okay? And you can come back to any one of them at any time, move it around, draw some more symmetry stuff, okay? Just make sure you activate it. Symmetry off, last use symmetry, vertical. There we go. Bah, 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 bah. And the other thing I wanted to show you as a time saver, especially for those of you who do a ton of pattern work, this is one of those lesser known features again, so I'm so glad that you're here for me uh, showing you this because you're gonna love it. It's gonna blow you away and it is called Pattern Preview. Check this out. Here we have a blank canvas and I say to myself, time to draw a really amazing pattern. Okay, I want it to repeat perfectly, right? So. View, pattern preview. Are you ready? What happened to my canvas? Watch this. I'm gonna draw a line here. Oh, wow. Pattern preview. Folks, this is a lifesaver for all the pattern po uh, people out there. You know what the old workflow was to do patterns. Do you remember all the work you had to do to try and make this happen? Okay. Those of you who know the old way are probably crying right now, crying in your coffee. Because this used to be such a laborious thing. Okay, but no more. Pattern preview has changed all of that. All right. It's a different world thanks to Pattern Preview. So that's it, you turn on Pattern Preview. When you turn Pattern Preview off, okay, well, let's go to View, turn it off. What you're left with is a perfect 
seamless tiling pattern file right here. You've got the tile, you save it. Bam, define pattern, save it, make a new document. Okay, we're gonna make it like 8,000 pixels by 8,000 pixels. We say create, and then we just go edit, fill. Let's use our pattern. Go down to that most recently uh, created pattern. There it is, bam. And now we're gonna fill it with that pattern, boom. Oops, I didn't do it, sorry. There we go, pattern, yes, yes, yes. It's there, it's just really light. <laughs> I don't know why. There we go. I must have saved it at, oh, I know, because when I filled it, I, I didn't fill it at 100% opacity. But there you go, hope that makes sense. Whew. All right, gang. A lot of tips. You got a couple of bonus ones in there. Okay. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Remember everybody, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Remember to be kind and I will say ciao for now.